My name is Kasiva and I'm a percussionist, I'm a drummer, but I feel like currently I'm very many things. And that's because of a very many factors that are affecting my life currently. I grew up like any other normal child. I went to school. I played with dolls and mud. Only that my childhood had a lot of um, sounds and consequently rhythm. I started playing um, because of stories that my grandma used to tell me. And she was really, really good at telling me these stories. And I used to bug her so much uh, for her to tell me more. And she'd get tired of me because I was really bugging. So um, she'd send me like to a spot maybe in the homestead to just chill there and listen to secrets being told by trees, or my secrets being told by animals. And I'd come back and like, eh, shobana, mborona, mborona nichenga. And she sent me back and tell me to listen further. So, you know, like just going back and forth and trying to listen to all these secrets, quote in quote, um, I started hearing rhythm within the sounds. Then I'd try and, you know, replicate that rhythm I was hearing like on my thighs, on my chest, um, on sufurias glasses, plates, whatever really I could find. I went to school, played desks, continued with my spoons, elevated to start playing buckets. Um, that was a major one and I was the otero in the class because now I could play buckets. And then went on in high school, at least now I got drums, drums, drums. And I felt, wa, ni mefika. It was so much fun that you feel like you cannot stop doing it. So I, I went, I studied, but I also played my drums of and I knew in my life somewhat, somewhat, uh, because I was starting to become a journalist, I knew that I wasn't going to play at, at any given, I wasn't going to stop. I was going to play. I try and balance a uh, campo and my drumming. It was tough because sometimes I had to leave Uganda where I was studying and take a night bus, come to Nairobi, come do a gig, uh, get very kidogo money, use it to, for my fare back, and that would be it. But I would go back very, feeling very fulfilled and extremely happy. One day I go for a gig and I actually get paid. I'm like, ah, okay. So people can be paid, um, people can be paid doing something that they really, really, really like doing. People can get paid having fun. I subconsciously felt that um, I wouldn't make my parents proud. And I think this is because of, you know, just these factors of just looking at the music industry and seeing just the normal traits. You see musicians and the trait at that time was ah, musicians, you become a musician, you become a drug addict, you become a drug addict, um, I'm an alcoholic, anasa. It's Anasa, money, women, you sin, then your career issues, and then you go back home to some boy your parents. Yet you got an education. So I was panicking. I was like, hey, is this what usually happens? But it was a very strong feeling of telling me this is really what I wanted to do because the kind of joy that I was getting, if truly any parent would want the best for their children, then Aki Kusema Ukweli, this is my absolute best. I am a happy human being, being, being a drummer, existing as a musician, existing as a percussionist. I am truly, I could never be happier. There is a guy actually, um, we met at um, a guy that I used to go to Campo with and we met at, uh, at the funeral of a fellow student who had passed away. And he said, ah, Chana, we wanna fanyanga kazi kwa maba. And then the way he said it was very spiteful to show that, ah, me have wasted my life. Um, yani basically, me potea sana. And that made me, you know, just uh, sit back and, and wonder, wow, okay, is this, is this the description of this thing that gives me so much joy? And then um, somewhere like a few years back, 
I was at a festival and uh, an, an old man told me to actually sit properly because I wasn't sitting like a woman and he actually asked me um, how, how do you think you look like uh, with that drum in between your legs. So I thought, what? Am I going to live a life of being sexualized because of something that I truly love? And how, Germany, how else was I supposed to hold that drum, you know? So there was a lot of questions that, and a lot of struggle that I was um, encountering that time. But my safe place was playing. When I played, I forgot everything. It was actually getting tougher because um, after I came back from Kampo, I never told my mom that I was in the country. Um, I was just hiding somewhere in Nairobi and playing my drums because I knew deep down she would not be accepting of it. The musicians themselves, some were not very welcoming and especially in the drumming community. Um, I would get, I wouldn't be told off, but there's small, small things that Paul do that show you, ah, you you're not accepted in this space. I'm a, I'm a, you ask guys, hey, can I jump? And then guys look at you and ask you, hey, you, you play, you really play. A, a bush show us what you can do. And then you're put, like, you're, you're the center of attention in, like, like, a group of guys. I mean, that would affect any lady. <laughs> I think. But I fought through, I fought through because again, the happiness that I was getting from these drums and from playing these drums is something that I've never felt before. Say, um, I can't say we're in a good space. In a good space to the point that now I'm even raising other female percussionists, you know, to, to be able to express themselves and tell their stories, you know, using the drum as a tool of expression. A percussionist is a person who plays percussion instruments. Percussion instruments are any instrument that you beat, shake, or rattle to produce a sound. So there's drums, um, there's shakers, there's jingles, there's rattles, um, there's some melodic instruments which are semi-percussive. Um, you could actually say a guitar is a melodic instrument which is semi-percussive because some people, you know, play and play the, the sound box at the same time. So you could actually place that there. There's percussions that emulate certain sounds or, or recreate, like try and recreate certain sounds. Like there's a little uh, percussion. I wish I came with my suitcase and showed you these things. They're really fantasy. They're like little toys. There's, uh, there's something that you strike and it sounds like the sound of thunder. I have a little frog in my suitcase that actually when you scrape it, it produces the sound of a frog croaking. Um, I have wind chimes that are very soothing. They have very tinkly, nice little melodies. Um, I have these rattles that when you throw up and catch, they sound like, almost like millions of particles falling down. And then when you grab them, it's almost like you've caught all these particles together. It's so much fun, man. <laughs> when I start making music, it's almost like an artist with a plain canvas and you just have a canvas with nothing and you have like there's a million trillion possibilities of what could come out of a plain canvas so that's where I usually am sometimes it's affected by the room because people are feeling different things and this this thing people call a vibe the crowd gives you a certain vibe sometimes it's what I'm feeling Say I woke up in the morning and didn't have my coffee. And I'm in pain. I'll express that in my playing. Ama, let's say I, I've left home and I just had a heartbreak two weeks ago. I'm still feeling that. I'll express that in my playing. You might come there with a heartbreak and then in the crowd some, someone beams you a big, big smile and it just uplifts you. And the direction changes. So all these feelings 
these emotions are channeled through the choice of instruments that I will pick up or the rhythm that I'll play, even how I will touch that drum, um, where I'll hit that drum, everything is channeled from deep within. Now he starts talking about the difficult things. <laughs> um, this EP, the process of making this EP has taught me um, that I'm actually stronger than I usually think I am. There's been a lot of anxiety in the whole process of coming up with the, with the EP, um, especially knowing the fact that this is my first, uh, it's my debut project. I've never recorded any music and released it before. This is my first project, my first single solo project, you know. There's always a doubt when you're just about to drop music because you're giving a little part of your soul away and you want to hold back to it because you know it's going and you don't know where you'll, it's like a well, you don't know where you're going to find a well to refill that thing that you've given away. I released my, my first uh, single ever on Friday. It's called Hakukole and I was a wreck. I was a ball of emotions that day, man. Like I almost, I cried like the whole morning and I had a gig in the evening and I didn't, I wasn't even sure if I was going to be able to make it for a gig because I just, I had so, I had so many emotions. Hakukole is, um, it's, it's actually Hawaiian and it stands for an art form that is, you know, poetry and songs that are designed to sort of ridicule a person in the most sarcastic, absurd way. And they're, they're almost like mchongwano, but mchongwano sang. And mchongwano that is, that is aimed to teach and impart knowledge. When I was composing Hakukole, I composed it to, uh, for somebody who leaves the country and goes abroad. Lafu Akirudi Anarudi Akiwa, quote in quote, westernized Amesahau culture. Amasema, warrior is me, warrior is, you know. <laughs> so that's, that, that's the guy I'm pashaying in, in Hakukole. The one thing that I could say I've picked from uh, most of my performances, which have been, um, most of them have been performing with. Um, musicians from different cultures is the art of collaboration. For you to truly collaborate, then you have to be willing to sort of, not forget, but um, learn to unlearn and accept the new that you are exposed to. Being exposed to such talented musicians and uh, musicians from, you know, so many cultural backgrounds has sort of built my muscle in terms of um, expanding my mind and expanding my musical ear to what I deemed as good music. Because before I started collaborating, I mean, I was only listening to um, Kenyan music and to Kenambali Sana, uh, Ugandan music, because I started there, and a lot of Lingala from Congo, and maybe Kidogorege. But now I met musicians from Rwanda, Burundi, Egypt, Morocco, um, Kazakhstan, you know, Iraq, Hawaii, and this just expands your mind to why, why have I been listening to music that is enclosed in these borders? Only people from other places are not making music. So I stopped being super closed-minded in that sense. So in these performances, just you see me working with, um, today I'm working in a, in a multicultural project. Tomorrow I'm backing uh, Fadili Tulia, uh, who plays Omutibo music. Tomorrow I'm backing Tetushani, who does, you know, um, Afro, Afro rock, you know, and music with rock influences. I'm learning and I'm picking up these little elements because I'm a person who doesn't believe that culture is stagnant. Culture is completely dynamic. It keeps moving. And when I travel, I bring instruments from wherever I've been. I, I collect drums and percussion from different places. And then I come and sit with them and 
it's sort of like um, brewing a relationship between you and an instrument because you see if you say for example um, I get a drum from Egypt I come home with it I haven't truly have I haven't gotten the enough time to master how they play it there but how am I going to make this instrument one with me is for me to find out how is this instrument played fine natively but also if I if I can't play it in their native manner how can I quote unquote cassivanize it okay. you know and I say to that instrument I look at it I touch it sometimes I, I look at it for days without even like playing okay. just to understand hey you're so beautiful um, I look inside I smell it you have to create a bond between you and your instrument. So ile sikuta muinua anze kumcheza, then it's, it's seamless, yani, it's seamless. And then you express yourself in the manner that you know with this instrument. The element of sound has the element of rhythm in it, whether you like it or not, because of this thing called time. Time. Yeah. Okay. Even the way a bird whistles, if you would take that whistle and loop it several times, you'll find a kabounce. In how it's with so <laughs> da, da, da. Da, da, da. there's time in these things so when I listen to when I listen to like when I listen to say like an acapella performance as you, as you said eh? yeah. in the manner they sing in that melody there's time within it and time is you know those things they say at the time signatures time is rhythm if you put in the work and the hours it gives because I am surviving as a full-time percussionist and drummer. It's all about how you relate the drum to, the every, to, to people's everyday lives. Then I think that is where the business you could... Now, now this is where we could actually talk about me and drumming in terms of like business because um, I'm the kind of person who has brought the traditional drum into boardrooms. I've brought the drums into into TED. I've brought drums into not into an entertainment space but into an educational space, um, into the tech space, into con the conservationists, uh, uh, the conservation space. As I said, it's all about how you tie your art with your everyday life because anyway art is everyday life okay. so that way then I'm able to make a living but I'm yeah, but as I that's full time that's what I do full time I play drums 365 days right. I, uh, okay. <laughs> I have so many drums many? oh my goodness I think currently maybe 20 something I'm not even sure uh, and then but overall like I think in my entire life I've owned like over like 60 something <laughs> drums and very many shakers I think I have like easily over like 70 shakers around, like lying around in my house my relationship with drumming is not it's not it's not for business it's not something I went to school to learn and to do it's something that's inbuilt, it's in my DNA. Drumming is not what I do, it's who I am. And I always say this like to people. So I can't imagine myself without, I can't imagine myself without music. I don't know, I, I don't even have a, there's no possibility of thoughts. It just ends there. <laughs> yeah.